following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Knowing Good and Evil Jehovah Elohim made to grow in the midst of Adam's tetradimensional physicality the tree of life, which is the central nervous system, and also the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is the genitalia. And he commanded Adam, the human soul, saying, you may freely feed your psyche through every chakra of your tetradimensional physical system, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is your genitalia, you shall not feed yourself through it. For in the day that you try by your own whim to do so, you shall surely die. After saying so, Jehovah Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead, instead thereof. And the rib which Jehovah Elohim had taken from Adam, he made a woman and brought her unto Adam. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, the sexual physical instinct, the serpent, was a more subtle life force than any life force of the tetradimensional physical system which Jehovah Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has Elohim said, you may freely feed your psyche through every chakra of your tetradimensional physical system. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may freely feed our psyche through every chakra of our tetradimensional physical system, but through the genitalia, which is in the midst of our physicality, Elohim has said, You shall not feed your psyche through it by your own whim. So do not you touch it, 
lest you die. In the sexual physical instinct, the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die if you control the spasm, the abominable orgasm of beasts and demons. For Elohim does know that in the day you sublimate the hydrogen T12 from your libido, then your spiritual eyes shall be opened and you shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. The hydrogen T12 is a Hebrew letter Tav and letter Yad. The letter Yad is the Shakti potential of Bina, the Holy Spirit, that operates through the cross, the letter Tav or T. The Hebrew it of Bereshit is a hydrogen T12 which emanates from the Ein Sof or the 12th Eon. Elohim used it wisely in the beginning in order to create the heavens and the earth. The fire of the solar absolute is symbolized in the Hebrew letter Shin, or letter S. The fiery serpent Quetzalcoatl of the Aztecs, the Aramaic Baresh of Bereshit, Genesis. When through the hydrogen T12, Baresh, the son of fire, penetrates into the proto-cosmos, it vibrates with the note C. <coughs> the letter Tav, or T, symbolizes the tree of knowledge of good and evil which is the cross or the crossing or fusion of the two beams or two sexual polarities joined in the sexual act. Thus, through the T, the letter Yad or I or the Hebrew It, the Shakti potential of the Absolute, the S, or letter Shin, the serpent, is liberated into the universe. The S, or letter Shin, is the Shakti potential of the solar absolute. In the book of Genesis, the two polarities, or beams of the cross, or of the letter Tav, or T, are called good and evil. Alchemically, the two polarities are called the sun and the moon, or water and spirit, mercury and sulfur, Ida and Pingala, etc. The Hebrew letter Yad is the fruit of the tree of knowledge, which is a cross or the letter Tav or T. The letter Yad also symbolizes the seed of the tree of knowledge. Since the seed of any fruit tree is in the fruit itself, so hydrogen T12 is seed and fruit at the same time. The sperm and the ovum 
are the seed and fruit of the human organism. They develop in the sexual organs. Within it is the S, or letter Shin, the Shakti potential of the solar absolute. The terms good and evil are also applied to the manner in which the Hebrew letter Yad, the Shakti potential, the sexual hydrogen T12, is manipulated. That is, whether manipulated in the solar or lunar manner, whether the human or bestial manner, in other words, Solar and lunar, good and evil, depends on how we utilize the cross, the T, or letter Tav. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, therefore, is the knowledge of how we, through the sexual act, utilize the sexual force, either for good or for evil. The S, therefore, the serpent, through it, ascends or descends. The system through which we can manipulate the Yad, the Shakti potential, the sexual hydrogen T12, by means of the cross or sexual act is called sexual alchemy. Sa'aha maituna, sexual magic, sexual transmutation, transubstantiation, transfiguration, sublimation, immaculate conception, etc. In Gnosticism, the term hydrogen has a very extensive significance. Indeed, in Gnostic esoteric chemistry, any simple element is hydrogen of a certain density. Hydrogen the 384, for instance, is found in water. The hydrogen 192 in the air, while the hydrogen 96 is wisely deposited in the animal magnetism, emanations of the human body, x-rays, hormones, vitamins, etc. <clears throat> the reason why the Gnostics call any simple or compound element hydrogen is because all elements in the universe come into existence through it. The Yad, the seed or Shakti potential of the Theomertma Logos, the Shin or letter S, the fire of prime emanation of the solar absolute that permeates with the Akashic waters of the abstract absolute space through the T or cross or letter Tau. The musical not C is the, hev uh, the Hebrew letter Shin or fiery serpent, the fire of the solar absolute, that through the cross, the T, the letter Tav, joins the Akashic waters of space, and the Ain Sof, the manifested Divine Mother, the twelfth Eon, and appears in the infinite, as the hydrogen C 
12. O hydrogen, T12. The creative power of the Logos. This is how Beresh It creates Elohim, heavens and earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It was in the beginning with God. All things were made by it, and without it was not anything made that was made. In it was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness didn't comprehend it. Bereshit was the Logos, and the Logos was, was with Theos. Thus, the Logos was the Theomermalogos. It is in Bereshit, the Theomermalogos. All things were made by it. And without it was not anything made that was made. In it is life, and the life is the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness didn't comprehend it. Beresh it created Elohim, the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1 The son of fire, Baresh, through it created Elohim. It in the heavens and it in the earth. All things are made of the divine creative sexual substance, which is it. Therefore, all things are made of it. Even Elohim was created by it. Master Samael Omveor stated, Nothing can exist, not even God, without the help of it, the matter. In the revolution of Beelzebub. Master Samael stated in Pisti Sophia, on Bailed, the Teomert Malogos weaves and unweaves its own loom with infinite wisdom. All of nature is the loom of God. The Teomert Malogos was altered in the dawn of the Maha Manvantara by a contact of the Geneotramatsikamnian type. This signifies that the sublime Teomert Malogos suffered a certain alteration when it made contact with the primogenial manifestation of the cosmos. Yes, every Elohim, every monad, permeates its triple creative power with this divine creative sexual substance. Therefore, every monad develops its triple creative potential through the duality of it, since it 
Bina, the divine creative sexual substance, the Holy Spirit, is a duality. <coughs> Every manifested monad contains its trinity within this duality. Thus, the realization of this trinity is done through the duality. The trinity is the three amends are the three primordial forces from nature and the cosmos. The three primordial forces are holy affirmation, holy negation, and holy conciliation. Three are the witnesses in heaven. The Father, the Logos, and the Holy Spirit. Three are the witnesses on earth. The breath, the blood, and the water. Samael Aum Beor. Thus, only through it can the trinity of the self, the monad, become cognizable and bear the three witnesses of the light. The monad is not that light, but came out from the Ein Sof into the universe in order to bear the three witnesses of that light. That light is the first Logos, the second Logos, and the third Logos, who are one with the Teomertma Logos. The breath, the blood, and the water are one life in our body. And this life can become the light in our soul and spirit to go beyond good and evil. This is how body, soul, and spirit can become one self-realized Elohim. So is every monad that is born of it, the Holy Spirit. It, the Holy Spirit, is the life that bears true light. Thus, it can enlighten every monad that absorbs the life of matter, since it is in the world, and the world was made by it. Yet, the world doesn't know anything about it. <clears throat> and Elohim blessed it the seventh day, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his works, which Elohim created and made. Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. The three imponderable particles or yads of the letter Shin, the primordial S, or fire, descend into creation through it. Therefore, creation develops such fire as light, as it. Thus, as many as retain it, to them gave 
it power to become children of the light. Who are those that develop pistis on it, their name, which were created not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but created by Elohim Bina, at Hashamaim Beat Haaretz. So this is how the light of the Logos is made flesh and can dwell among us. And this is how we can retain his light, which is the light of the holy begotten of the absolute. The Teomertma Logos, full of grace and truth. These children of the light are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they are created in the day that Yod Elohim Bina made the earth and the heavens. Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. Thus, all invisible and visible things in all heavens and in all earths are made by it, be Elohim. Things through it, the light of the solar absolute penetrates into the universe. It transforms energy into matter and it transform matter into energy. Matter exteriorizes the light of the Teomerma Logos. Thus, through it, we develop cognizance. Kabbalistically, the word it in Hebrew <coughs> has the value of five because the letter Yad has the value of ten and the letter Tav the value of four hundred. By adding the numbers four hundred and ten the sum is five. Likewise it when written with Aleph and Tav. Aleph has the value of five. And Tav, the value of 400. So by adding these letters or the value of the letter together, they sum five. This is why it is stated the Divine Mother Kundalini it within ourselves has five aspects allegorized by the five-legged white cow. Madame Blavatsky really did see an authentic five-legged white cow in India. There is no doubt that it carried the fifth leg on its back and with this leg it was scaring flies or scratching itself. Madame Blavatsky states that this curious creature of nature was herded by a young boy from the Sadhu sect. This virgin boy nourished himself exclusively with the milk of this mysterious cow. Pisti Sophia unveiled by Samael on the or. The letter Yad is the tenth letter and represents E-O. 
que té en Malkut. The letter Aleph represents the three primary forces, namely Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The three Sephirotic, Keter, Chokma, and Binah. The letter Tav, whose ancient hieroglyphic is the cross, represents Malkut. The complete union of Shaloma and Sheba. Heaven and earth, or Melech and Malka. King and queen, man and woman, sexually united. This is how, through sexual alchemy, Yod Haba Elohim, Bina, the intelligence of the force of love, transforms the sexual substance of man and woman into creative, creative energy. So that their creative energy make new heavens and new earth within both of them. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto Elohim who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Ecclesiastes 12, 7 and 8. As the vanity of the physical body decays and dies and becomes dust, likewise the vanities of the protoplasmic bodies decay and die the second death and are reduced to cosmic dust. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must, me, must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 53 to 54. <clears throat> the substance of the corruptible matter is not completely destroyed, for matter and energy emerge from Elohim and enter into the universe through it. And Elohim is indestructible and eternal. At the end of the Mahamanvantara, matter and energy is drowned into the bosom of Elohim, so that nothing of it, the divine sexual substance, is lost. It is the ens seminis, or material sexual entity. It is solar light, transformed into creative substance through the metabolism of the human organism. Thus, through sexual alchemy, it becomes ens spirituale, or a spiritual entity that rises to ens dei, or the entity of God. For the spirit shall return unto Elohim who gave it, since God is a spirit, or the Ruach Elohim, who in the beginning was hovering upon the face of it, the waters. This is Gnosis, or the doctrine of alchemy, 
taught by Moses in Mount Sinai, by Elijah in Mount Carmel, and by Jesus in the Mount of Olives, which is a transfiguration or metamorphosis of our corruptible matter into incorruptible matter. In other words, the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead. Malkuth, our physical body, is corruptible matter, yet is the manifestation of our spirit who by means of the will of God or sexual alchemy can make the light of the Theomerma Logos to dwell among us and thus transform our corruptible matter into an incorruptible matter that becomes the vesture of our inner being. The Sanskrit word tat means that it denotes the third person that indicates that praying with pure devotion must be selfishly directedly or directed only to god avoiding any material personal aspirations That is the true light of the Theomerma Logos, which lightens every one that comes into the world. That is in the world, and the world was, was made by that, and the world does not know that. That came unto his own and his own did not receive it. But as many as received that, to them gave that power to become the sons of God. To them that have faith on that, his name, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of the will of God. John Chapter 1, 9 to 13. <clears throat> the will of God is done through the alchemical crucible. The mystery of the golden blossom says, Purify your heart, clean your thoughts, curtail your appetite, and conserve the semen. If thoughts are durable, so too will be the semen. If the semen is durable, so also will be the power. If the power is lasting, the spirit will be as well. The power of the kidneys is located under the symbol of water. When the impulses are aroused, it flows downwards, goes outward, and produces offspring. When it is directed back by the power of thought, filtering upward to the crucible of the Creator, it refreshes and nourishes heart and body. It is the reflux method. These are words from the cited uh, Taoist text, The Mystery of the Golden Blossom, by Samael on the Or. The raw matter which is within the crucible is a raw mercury of the great work, which is the Anseminis. This is the water that has to be transmuted into wine. Roger Bacon stated, Nature 
contains nature. Nature overcomes nature. And nature, meeting with her nature, exceedingly rejoices and is changed into other natures. Angels are not made with theories of men. Angels are natural, not artificial. Nature contains nature, and he blessed, and the blessed stone is our sexual nature, with which we can work in our magisterium of fire. It is necessary to bake, bake and rebake, and not to become tired of it. The ancient alchemists stated, Let your fire be tranquil, tranquil and gentle. Let it be kept as this each day, always uniform, without being weak. If this is not so, it will cause great damage. The fire becomes weak and even extinguishes when the alchemist ejaculates the semen. The alchemist then fails in the great work. Treatise of Sexual Alchemy by Samael Onvel. Seven times we have to refine the fire in the crucible, from Malkut to Hesed, until the Logos becomes flesh and dwells among us. This is how we behold his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the absolute, full of grace and truth. The incarnated light will transfigure the whole sexual substance and convert it into a divine Elohim by alchemically transmuting its two polarities. Unless the sexual substance is reduced to it, its own true nature, it cannot create a divine nature. <coughs> the Divine Mother in the unknowable abstract absolute space is it. The Divine Mother Nature in the Heavenly Eden is it. And the Divine Mother in any human being is it. These are the three mothers, the three Marys of Christianity. And in Hinduism, Parvati, Lakshmi, and Sarasvati. The three consorts of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Remember, Bar Esh It, Bar Elohim, At Hashamayim, Beat Haaretz. The son of fire, the son of Elohim, through it, created it, the heavens, and it, the earth. So it in the space is equal to it in the heavens, which is equal to it in the earth. That is, in order for it to make the heavens in us, one needs to have it in the earth, our physicality. It is the substance of Elohim in the earth, our physicality. Thus, only through it one knows how to do the will of Elohim in the earth as it is done in heaven. Thus, submit yourself to it, the will of God, 
and you will become like God, knowing good and evil. And as Elohim, you will return to it. For I have said, you are Elohim, and all of you are children of Bereshit, the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. Psalm 82, 6 to 8. <coughs> and remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw nigh, of which you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. For God shall bring every work into judgment, with every sacred thing, whether it, is be, uh, it be good or whether it be evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1 to 14. Now, given the Kabbalistic complexity and diversity of what we previously quoted and said to the different concepts of the pre-existence of this divine substance, which on earth is alchemically and Kabbalistically called hydrogen T12, exogehari, mercury, mary, water, and seminis, and in heaven, Hydrogen, hydrogen T12, Bina, Shiva, the Holy Spirit, by means of which the Logos, Vishnu, is made flesh. It seems good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto you in order. O oh, most excellent lover of God, that you might know the certainty of those things wherein, wherein you has been instructed. Neuma in Greek is equal to Helios, the solar spirit, the divine nature of Christ, the prime emanation of the solar absolute. It is written, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I said unto you, Except one is born again, one cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can one be born when one is old? Can one enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I said unto you, Except one is born of water and of the Spirit, one cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is a Spirit. Do not marvel that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it is listened, and you hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it comes and whither it goes. 
So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. <clears throat> verily, verily, I said unto you, except one is born of water and of the Spirit, one cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the Spirit is a Spirit. The scientific clue in order to be born of the Spirit is in the Saaha Maituna, the creation of the psychicon and the pneumaticon bodies are necessary in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. This type of birth is performed through sexual alchemy by means of the sublimation of the hydrogen T12. This sublimation is performed in the nuptial chamber in the ninth sphere, sex. Master Samael on the or states in the perfect matrimony. This is a work bitterer than bile. Daily sexual connection of the same man with the same woman over 20 or 30 years without ever spilling even a single drop of semen, without allowing the semen to leave our organism. No human being is born of theory. Not even a simple microbe can be born of theories. No one is born through the nostrils, nor through the mouth. Every living being is born of sex. As above, so below. If the human being is born of sex here in this physical world, it is logical that above, in the internal worlds, the process is analogous. Law is law, and the law is fulfilled. The water that Jesus addresses in the sexual is the sexual hydrogen T12, which in Sanskrit is called akasha. It is a feminine substance that permeates the space named hydro in Greek. The it of the abstract absolute space relate to it the feminine creative polarity of the heavens and of the earth. This is why in Gnostic alchemy, it is referred to as hydrogen. From Greek, hydro or hydor, water, and gina, which means female, genes, Genitalia, Genesis, etc. It is written at the end of the world, I mean, of the word Bereshit, which means in English, in the beginning. Spirit is Neuma in Greek, which is equal to Helios. The solar spirit, Inri, the fire, the solar light is the divine nature of Christ, which is the son of the prime emanation of the solar absolute. It is what is called in Aramaic, Baresh, the son of fire. Thus, Baresh and it are the water and the spirit that Jesus talked about. Baresh and it together form the word Bareshit that in the book of Genesis is translated as in the beginning. If I have told you early things 
and you do not believe, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? John 3, 12. Christ is Baresh, the son of fire, who is Ingri, the savior. However, when Baresh is born in Mary, Malkut, by the grace of it, the Holy Spirit, Baresh becomes then the Son of Man, the Twin Savior. Master Samael Onveor stated, The Twin Savior is the Son of Man. The Twin Savior is Tifereth, the Causal Man, within whom the Logos, the Christ, is manifested. The twin savior is certainly the child of the child. Pisti Sophia unveiled. The son of man, the Sephira Tifereth, is the human soul of the Sephira has said, the Spirit, the Son of God. The Sephira has said, is calling Kabbalah the Son of God, or the Spirit of God, the Ruach Elohim. The Sephira Tifereth, the human soul, works in the Sephira Malkut under the guidance of Hesed, the Ruach Elohim, who hovers upon the face of the water, the sexual hydrogen T12 of the human organism. The Sephira Malkut, the human body, through its metabolism, elaborates the sexual hydrogen T12, which are the waters of Genesis. That's why uh, John in chapter 3, verse 12 to 15, stated, And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he, Baresh, the S, the son of fire that came down from heaven, even Tifereth, the son of man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up Baresh, the S, the son of fire, the brazen serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up through the spinal medullar canal, that whosoever develops faith in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now listen. The physical body of our physical parents is sustained with the hydrogen 48. Our physical parents with their hydrogen T12, their enzymes, during the sexual act, created our physical zygote. That is, during the sexual act, one sperm from the genitalia of our physical father was absorbed by the ovum within the genitalia of our physical mother, thus forming a zygote. In other words, the hydrogen T12 within the male gam gamete joined to the female gamete formed the zygote, which the, within the womb of our physical mother. 
The hydrogen 48 feeds our mother's physicality because this physical world is governed by 48 laws. During the pregnancy, the zygote, all of its cells, as a way of saying, remain impregnated by the emanations of our mother's sexual matter, which is the hydrogen T12. Therefore, when the cells of the zygote have been saturated enough, then the matter T12 starts to metamorphose the zygote cells into an embryo's cerebral spinal system forming thus the human embryo, and through it, forming the rest of the fetus within her womb. Such a fetus is sustained, fed, with the mother's hydrogen 48. This, as we know, occurs during nine months. When the baby is born in this world of 48 laws, then this baby's physical body continue being sustained, fed with the hydrogen 48 of this physical world and developed by the baby's own hydrogen T12. Such development is described in the lecture The Metallic Planets of Alchemy by the Master Samael on the Or. It is urgent to know that there are 12 fundamental basic hydrogens in the universe. The 12 basic hydrogens are arranged in tiers in accordance with the 12 cat cat uh, categories of matter. The 12 categories of matter exist in all creation. Let us remember the 12 salts of the zodiac, the 12 spheres of cosmic vibration within which a solar humanity must be developed. All the secondary hydrogens whose varied densities go through six to 12,283 are derived from the 12 basic hydrogens. In Gnosticism, the term hydrogen has a very extensive significance. Indeed, any simple element is hydrogen of a certain density. Hydrogen 384 is found in water. 192 in the air, while 96 is wisely deposited in the animal magnetism, emanations of the human body, x-rays, hormones, vitamins, etc. By now, the brothers and sisters of the Gnostic movement are very acquainted with hydrogens 48, 24, 12, and 6. Given that we have studied them in our previous, uh, previous Christmas messages. This most interesting subject matter about hydrogens belongs to the branch of occult chemistry or Gnostic chemistry. And since it is quite difficult for the good of our students, we prefer to study it little by little in each one of our Christmas messages. This is from Light from Darkness by Samael Onveor. There are lunar and solar bodies. Both are crystallizations of the hydrogen T12. Lunar bodies are mechanical and negative crystallizations of the hydrogen T12. Solar bodies are cognizant and positive crystallizations of the hydrogen T12. The physical body is sustained with the hydrogen 48. 
Hydrogen 48 corresponds to chlorine, atomic weight 35.5. Hydrogen 24 corresponds to fluorine, atomic weight 19. Hydrogen 12 corresponds to hydrogen of chemistry H, atomic weight 1. Carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen have the atomic weights of 12, 14, and 16. Hydrogen 96 corresponds to bromine, atomic weight 80. Hydrogen 90, uh, 192 corresponds to iodine, atomic weight 127. This is uh, Quotes from Light from Darkness by Samael Onveor. The animal ego is governed by 96 laws and therefore corresponds to hydrogen 96. Obviously, the lunar bodies, namely the Kama Rupa or body of desires, in the Kama Manas, or mine of desires, named protoplasmic or lunar bodies, are patrimony of elementals of the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, and animal kingdom, and are fed with the hydrogens 24 and 12 that relate to the fifth dimension. These are also crystallizations of the hydrogen T12. The embryos of human soul, the elementals of nature, are fed with the hydrogen 6 that corresponds to Tiferet. As the physical body is fed and sustained with the hydrogen 48 and is submitted to death. Likewise, the protoplasmic lunar bodies are fed with the hydrogens 24 and 12 and are submitted to the second death. In the humanoid, the protoplasmic bodies start to devolve toward the second death which occurs in the inferior dimensions of nature and the cosmos. In the fifth dimension, the evolving protoplasmic bodies of the humanoid look like lunar specters, like lunar phantoms. Comprehend the solar astral and mental bodies which eventually we have to create with the hydrogen T12, are fed with the hydrogens 24 and 12. Obviously, the hydrogen 24 corresponds to the emotional center and the hydrogen 12 to the intellectual center. When the sexual center is forced to work with hydrogens like 12, intellect, 24, emotion, 48, motion, etc., then it is impossible to build the superior existential bodies of the being. This is from the Spiritual Power of Sun by Samael Ambeor. Then, how do we build the solar existential bodies of the being? Listen. As a physical body is created and developed by the hydrogen T12 within the womb of the physical body of our physical mother and fed with the hydrogen 48, likewise, the existential bodies of the being are created and developed 
by our Divine Mother Kundalini. Within the womb or spinal medulla of the protoplasmic lunar bodies. What does the Master Samael on the Earth state about this? Listen, he said in the perfect matrimony. The third serpent rises through the medullar canal of the astral specter or lunar protoplasmic body. <coughs> the third serpent must reach the magnetic field at the root of the nose of the astral specter and then from there descend to the heart through a sacred pathway within where seven holy chamber exist. When the third serpent reaches the heart, a most beautiful child, the Christ astral, is born. The outcome of all of this is the initiation. The neophyte has to experience within his astral body the entire drama of the passion of Christ. He has to be crucified died and buried. He has then to resurrect and must also descend to the abyss and remain there for 40 days before the ascension. The supreme ceremony of the third initiation is attained with the Christ, with the Christ astral. Upon the altar appears Sanat Kumara, the Ancient of Days, in order to grant us the initiation. Everyone who attains the third initiation of major mysteries receives the Holy Spirit, the perfect matrimony by Samael on the Or. Theosophists, Rosicrucians, and spiritualists Talk a lot about the astral body and think that they know it thoroughly. But who among them has ever spoken about the third igneous serpent and about the ultraviology and ultraphysiology of the superior astral? Who among them knew that within the astral body another superior astral body is formed. The seven words by Samael on the earth. Obviously, when the astral solar body is born, it has to be fed with the hydrogen 24. The astral specter manifests our egotistical emotions through our emotional center. The Christ astral relates to our superior emotional center. This is how the second Logos establishes his kingdom in our heart. So the astral solar body is a crystallization of the sexual hydrogen T12. Master Samael wrote in the Cosmic Teachings of Alama the following. To transmute this portentous hydrogen in order to give to it an intelligent crystallization on a second superior octave actually signifies to create a new life within the existing organism to give an evident form to the astral body or sidereal body of alchemists and Kabbalists. Master Samael says, the Master G stated, 
you must understand that the astral body is born from the same material, from the same substance, from the same matter, the hydrogen T12, from where the physical body is born. The only thing which is different is the procedure. The whole physical body, all of its cells, as a way of saying, remain impregnated through sexual alchemy by the emanations of the matter which is T12. Therefore, when these have been saturated enough, then the matter T12 starts to crystallize through the medullar canal of the astral specter in a second superior octave. The Master Samael continued. Then the cited Master added, the crystallization of this matter, the hydrogen T12, constitutes the formation of the astral body through the medullar canal of the astral specter. The transition of the matter T12 into a condition of emanations and, to, and into the gradual saturation of the whole physical organism with these emanations is what in alchemy is called transmutation or transformation. The Master G, says the Master Samael, continues saying, precisely this transformation of the hydrogen T12 of the physical body into the astral body is, is what in alchemy is called the transformation of the gross metals into fine metals. In other words, the acquisition of gold from ordinary metals. This is from Cosmic Teachings of Alama by Samael on the Or. In order to clarify this subject matter even more, it is necessary to add to the former quotation from Master G and Master Samael on the Or that the first and second initiations of major mysteries that relate to the physical body and its superior aspect or vital body correspond to this saturation of the cells of our tetradimensional physical organism with the emanations of the sexual hydrogen T12 through sexual alchemy. Master Zamael of Beor continues. Let us now study the famous sexual hydrogen T12, the marvelous creative hydrogen that is wisely elaborated in the factory of the human organism. Any legitimate mutant of a favorable type is the specific outcome of distinct crystallizations of the sexual hydrogen T12. It is unquestionable that the cited hydrogen represents the final outcome from the transformation of the food within the marvelous laboratory of our human organism. It is obvious that this is the primordial matter with which sex works. This is the prime substance of the great work, a substance which the sexual center fabricates very wisely. It is certain that the Anseminus and its peculiar hydrogen T12 is seed and fruit at the same time. Within the human organism, the passive food on the plate passes through many transformations. 
refinements and subtle changes that are proceed, uh, processed within the musical scale do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. The transformation of the passive food of the plate begins with the note do. The resulting chime of the first stage of transformation follows with the note re. The very refined food that osmotic osmotically passes into the sanguineous fluid continues with the note mi and so on successively other processes follow until the vast element of the entire organism becomes elaborated that is the wonderful elixir the seminal liquor with its hydrogen 12, in the note T. The sexual hydrogen T12 is found in the semen. That hydrogen is the creative power of the third logos, the Holy Spirit. The first musical octave, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, corresponds exactly to the manufacture of the sexual hydrogen T12 within the sexual glands of the human organism. A very special shock by means of my tuna, sexual magic, allows the sexual hydrogen T12 to pass to a second musical octave, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, whose outcome becomes the crystallization of the sexual hydrogen T12 into the extraordinary form of the astral body. This is what is called to transmute lead into gold. It is urgent to transmute the flesh and the blood in the astral body. From Light from Darkness by Samael Onver. If you state that it is not do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, but do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, then listen to what the Master Samael said in his book Tarot and Kabbalah. If we reflect very seriously on that intimate relationship that exists between the S and the Tau cross, or T, or letter, or Hebrew letter Tav, we arrive at the logical conclusion that only through the crossing of the lingam yoni, phallus and uterus, with radical exclusion of the physiological orgasm, one can awaken the Kundalini, which is the ignorant serpent of our magical powers. The S. The S is the brass and serpent, the letter Shin, the Kabbalistic symbol of the fire, the very essence of the cross, or letter Tav, the hydrogen T12. This is why it is written in the Zohar. Adam, as stated, was separated from his wife, during which time he begot demons and elementaries that swarmed throughout the world. While under the influence of lust, the impure spirit, he felt no desire to become associated with Eve. But after repenting and overcoming fornication, his animal propensities, he became again united to her. And then it is said, And Adam lived 
130 years, 100 corresponds esoterically to the first initiation of major mysteries, and 30 to the 30th vertebra of the second initiation of major mysteries. And then Genesis continue, and begat with the sexual hydrogen T12, a son, his astral body, in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth, which is written with Shin and Tav, signifying thereby that as the two letters, S and T, are the last of the Hebrew alphabet, so this son was the ending of the terrible fornicating experience through which Eve and Adam had passed and undergone. Zohar. Matthew Samael stated, when all of the cells of our tetradimensional physical organism are saturated with a sexual hydrogen T12, then the physical body has a surplus of hydrogen 48, which is the hydrogen with which our tetradimensional physical body is fed. The surplus of hydrogen 48 becomes hydrogen 24, with which the astral solar body is fed. The surplus of hydrogen 24 becomes hydrogen 12. Do not confuse the hydrogen 12 with the hydrogen T12. The hydrogen 12 fits the mental body. The surplus of hydrogen 12 becomes hydrogen 6, with which the body of conscious will, or authentic causal body, is fed. This is from Light from Darkness by Samael Onveor. Listen, if we must not confuse the sexual hydrogen T12 with the hydrogen 12, Obviously, we must not either confuse the sexual hydrogen T12 with the hydrogen 48, hydrogen 24, and hydrogen 6. The hydrogens 48, 24, 12, and 6 do not create life, do not create any solar body, they only sustain the life already created by the sexual hydrogen T12. Since this hydrogen T12 is the creative power of the third logos. Matthew Zamanel continues, a second shock by means of my tuna, sexual magic allows the sexual hydrogen T12 to pass to a third musical octave, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, whose outcome becomes the crystallization of the sexual hydrogen T12 in the extraordinary form of the mental solar body paradisiacal body. Samael on the or. Matthew Samael continues stating, when the fourth serpent has succeeded in the ascent through the medullar canal of the mental specter, then the four initiation of major mysteries is attained. The fourth serpent also reaches the space between the eyebrows 
and descends to the heart. In the world of the mind, Sanat Kumara always welcomes the candidate saying, You have liberated yourself from the four bodies of sin. You are a Buddha. You have entered the world of the gods. You are a Buddha. Everyone who liberates himself of the four bodies of sin is a Buddha. You are a Buddha. You are a Buddha. The cosmic festivity of this initiation is grandiose. The entire world, the entire universe trembles with happiness, saying, a new Buddha has been born. The Divine Mother Kundalini presents her child in the temple, saying, This is my beloved child. He is a new Buddha. He is a new Buddha. He is a new Buddha. The Perfect Matrimony by Samael Ambeor. When all of the organs of our astral solar organism are saturated with the sexual hydrogen T12, then the astral solar body has a surplus of hydrogen 24, which is the hydrogen with which the astral solar body is fed. The surplus of hydrogen 24 becomes hydrogen 12. Do not confuse the hydrogen 12 with the hydrogen T12. The hydrogen 12 feeds the mental solar body. Samael on the earth. A third shock by means of my tuna, sexual magic, allowed the hydrogen T12 to pass to a fourth musical octave, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, whose outcome is the crystallization of the sexual hydrogen T12 in the magnificent form of the body of the conscious will or causal body. From Light from Darkness by Samael on the Earth. Now, in the perfect matrimony, Master Samael states The fifth serpent rises through the medullar canal of that embryo of soul that we have incarnated. The fifth serpent must reach the eyebrows and then descend to the heart. The body of conscious will is born in the fifth great initiation. Everyone who is born in the world of the conscious will inevitable incarnates his soul. Everyone who incarnates his soul becomes a true human, a human being with soul. Every true, complete, and immortal human being is an authentic master. Before the fifth initiation of major mysteries, no one must be called by the title of master. In the fifth initiation, we learn to do the will of the Father. We must learn to obey the Father. This is the law. In the fifth initiation, we must decide between two paths. Which one to take to continue on, either to remain in nirvana, enjoying the infinite bliss of the boundless sacred space, sharing with the ineffable gods, or rather, to renounce that immense bliss of nirvana and remain living in this valley of tears in order to help the poor suffering humanity. Perfect Matrimony by Samael on the Earth. When all of the organs of our mental solar organism are saturated with a sexual hydrogen T12, then the mental solar body has a surplus of hydrogen 12, which is the hydrogen with which the mental solar body is fed. The surplus of hydrogen 12 becomes hydrogen 6, with which the body of conscious will 
our authentic causal body is fed. The sexual hydrogen T12 is seed and fruit. And what is astounding is that it always crystallizes in organisms of flesh and bone. Let us remember that the physical body is the outcome of the sexual hydrogen T12. The astral body also becomes the outcome of it. But through the special act, Maituna, union with the phallus and the uterus without spilling the semen. Thus, the astral body is also a body of flesh and bone, a flesh that does not come from Adam, but a flesh product of the sexual hydrogen T12. The true mental body is also the product of Maituna, sexual magic, and of the sexual hydrogen T12. This is a paradisiacal body, a body of perfection, a body of flesh and bone, but flesh does not come from Adam. The body of conscious will, also called causal body, is also the outcome of the sexual act, maituna, without spilling the semen. The body of conscious will or causal body is the outcome of the crystallization of the sexual hydrogen T12. The authentic astral solar body, the true mental solar body, and the legitimate causal solar body constitute the solar bodies, the existential superior bodies of the being. Whosoever builds in the ninth sphere, the superior existential bodies of the being, the solar bodies, can have all the right to incarnate their real being, their immortal tune spirit, Atman Buddhi Manas, or divine spirit, spirit of life, a human spirit, innermost, spiritual soul, and human soul. Then, when arriving at these initiatic heights, it is stated that a new human being has been born, the son of man, a new master of the day, a master of the Maha Mambantara. Any master who has been born within the superior worlds must eliminate the lunar bodies. These substitute our animal remnants that come from ancient times. Common and ordinary disincarnate souls dressed with their lunar bodies seem cold, gusty, unconscious, unconscious somnambulists living in the past. The intellectual animal is 100% lunar, and indeed, he is not a true human being. Only by fabricating the solar bodies do we become true human beings. It is necessary to engender the internal vehicles. It is necessary to be born in the superior world. Celibacy in, is an absolutely false path. We need the perfect matrimony. After birth, each vehicle needs its special nourishment. Only with this special nourishment does it develop and strengthen itself totally. The nourishment of these vehicles is based on hydrogens. The different types of hydrogens with which the different internal bodies of the human being are nourished are produced within the physical organism. Laws of the bodies. Physical body, this is governed by 48 laws. 
Its basic nourishment is hydrogen-48. Astral body, this vehicle is subject to 24 LAS. Its basic nourishment is hydrogen-24. Mental body, this vehicle is subject to 12 LAS. Its basic nourishment is hydrogen-12. Causal body, this vehicle is governed by 6 LAS. Its basic nourishment is hydrogen-6. Perfect matrimony by Samael on the all. Now let us cabalistically and alchemically analyze the hydrogen T12 under the light of the book of Genesis. It is alchemically clear that the N. seminis and its peculiar hydrogen T12 is the seed within the fruit of the tree of good and evil, a seed and fruit that this terrestrial humanity has been eaten like the beasts since the time of Lemuria. The human being of Lemuria were true humans since they were living in Eden, the fourth dimension, the superior aspect of this physical world. All of them were twice born, that is, all of them had physical, astral, mental, and causal solar bodies. They were exercising their being part log duty. They exercised this duty as follows. They did not allow intellectual concepts to pass through their mind in a mechanical manner. In other words, they became cognizant of all the intellectual data that came to their mind. How do they become cognizant of that data? They did it by means of meditation. Second, they became cognizant of all the activities of their emotional center. Third, they became self-cognizant of all their activities, of all their movements, of all their habits, and did not do anything in a mechanical manner. Fourth, they became lords of their instincts and subdued them. They comprehended them in depth, integrally. Fifth, they transmuted their sexual energy by means of Kriya Shakti. In other words, they transmuted their creative energies by means of sexual alchemy. Because of their being partial dog duty, the physical lifespan of Lemurians was about 10 to 15 centuries. They were created in the likeness of Elohim. Male and female were they created and were blessed and were named Adam in the day when they were created. Genesis 5 2. And they, Adam Harishon, the first Adam, were placed by Jodhava Elohim in the terrestrial paradise within the fourth dimension to dress it and to keep it. As is stated in Genesis 2 verse 8, and Jehovah Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put Adam whom he had formed. Much as Amael on the or stated, there has been much discussion regarding the topic of the terrestrial paradise. Max Handel sustained that the terrestrial paradise is the astral light. Yet, he didn't inquire into what the world, the word terrestrial signifies. Really, this paradise existed and was the continent of Lemuria which was situated in the Pacific Ocean. 
It was the first dry land that existed in the world. The temperature during that time was extremely warm. The imagination of the human being was an ineffable mirror in which the panorama of the starry heavens of Urania was solemnly reflected. The human being knew that his life was the life of the gods. The one who knew how to play the lyre shook the divine fields with his delectable melodies. The artist who handled the brush inspired himself with the eternal wisdom. He gave to his delicate sculptures the tremendous majesty of God. Oh, the epoch of Titans. It was an epoch in which the rivers poured forth milk and honey. The Lemurians were of a high stature, and they had a broad forehead. They wore symbolic tunics, which were white in the front and black in the back. They had flying ship and boats propelled by atomic energy. The lightning system used in the Lemurian structures was made from nuclear energy. They reached a very high degree of culture. Such were the times of Arcadia. The human being knew how to listen to the voice of the gods through the seven vowels of nature. The seven vowels. E-E-O-A-M-S resounded in the Lemurian bodies with all of the ineffable music of the accentuated rhythms of the fire. During that Lemurian epoch, the Earth recapitulated the lunar period because the following law in life exists. Before initiating its new manifestations, nature has to recapitulate all of its former manifestations. Lemuria was a recapitulation of the lunar period. This is taken from Revolution of Belzebub by Samael on the Earth. The Archangels, the humanity of the solar round, reincarnated in Lemurian bodies, as well as the lords of mine, the humanity of the Saturnian round, and the angels, the humanity of the lunar round. These Lemurian bodhisattvas were assisted by the lords of form who are in charge of our present terrestrial round. The lords of form assisted these Lemurian bodhisattvas to build their tetradimensional terrestrial body by means of Kriya Shakti. The souls of the animals from the lunar round became Lemurian humanoids. They inherited their tetradimensional terrestrial body through Kriya Shakti conception, practiced by their parents, the Lemurian Bodhisattvas. The animal souls of Lemurian humanoids learn from Lemurian bodhisattvas how to build To Soma Psychikon, the wedding garment of the soul, the body of gold by means, by means of the sublimation of their sexual hydrogen T12 through the second initiation of the major mysteries. Master Samael on the or Rot. Tosoma Psychicon, the wedding garment of the soul, the body of gold, 
is born in the second initiation. This vehicle is formed with the two superior ethers. The ethereal body has four ethers, two superior and two inferior. Thus, with the wedding garment of the soul, we can enter all the regions of the kingdom. Perfect matrimony by Samael on the Or. These animal souls also learned how to build the astral solar body and mental solar body through the third and fourth initiation, respectively, as well as their tetradimensional physical body of liberation. Regarding the fourth initiation of major mysteries, Marcy Samael wrote, there are two types of flesh. One comes from Adam, and the other does not come from Adam. The flesh that comes from Adam is vulgar and corruptible. The flesh that does not come from Adam is eternal and incorruptible. When the igneous serpent of the mental body reaches a certain canyon, canyon, the master then dies and is born in life. The divine rabbi of Galilee, riding upon a donkey, enters the celestial Jerusalem with the newly liberated human being. The newly liberated human being, also riding upon a donkey, triumphantly and victoriously enters the city where he is received with palms and praises. The master contemplates his body of clay that is crumbling into pieces. And the divine Rabbi of Galilee says to the newly liberated one, you do not need that now. From this instant, the master is liberated from the will of birth and death. A new, ultra-sensible physical body, filled with millenarian perfection, has been formed from the finest atoms of the physical body. It has the majestic appearance of the cosmic Christ and is eternal and incorruptible. This vehicle that replaces the physical body of clay has been formed in the vital depth of our clay body in the same manner that a chick is formed within the egg. This new physical body has the power to make itself visible and tangible in any place and to feed itself with the fruits and pure water. The honey from the honey bee is the food of the masters of the universal white fraternity. When we, the members of the sacred college of initiates, are out of this physical body of clay, we function with the body of liberation which is made from the purest musk. However, when we are incarnated, accomplishing the mission in favor of this painful humanity, we move through places unnoticed, just as anyone on the street. We dress in clothes as our fellow men. We live and work to earn our daily bread, just as every citizen does. The body of liberation converts us into citizens of Eden. This is how Christ enters us through the doors of the triumphant and victorious city. Ignus Rose by Samael on the
And uh, thereafter, these uh, humanoids in Lemurian epochs built the causal solar body, the body of Tifereth. Thus, this is how their embryo of soul became a human soul. So this is how these humanoids became true human beings in this present terrestrial epoch in the Lemurian continent. Resurrection. In the same way that three basic types of energy exist, masculine, feminine, and neutral, three types of resurrection exist as well. Spiritual resurrection, resurrection with the body of liberation, and resurrection with the physical body. No one can pass the second or third type of resurrection without having first passed the spiritual resurrection. Spiritual resurrection. This is achieved through initiation. First, we must spiritual resurrect in the fire. And then, we have to resurrect in the light. Meaning, first we must rise up the seven serpents of fire. And then, the seven serpents of light. This is done through the Venustic initiation. This is what we call the spiritual resurrection. Resurrection with the body of liberation. This is performed in the superior worlds. This body is organized with the best atoms of the physical body. It is a body of flesh that does not come from Adam. It is a body of indescribable beauty. With this body of paradise, adepts can enter into the physical world and work in it by making themselves visible and tangible at will. Resurrection with the physical body. The initiate comes with the astral body on the third day after the death of his physical body. In front of his body in his holy sepulcher, accompanied by the divine hierarchies, the initiate invokes his physical body with the help of the divine hierarchies. The physical body rises up, penetrated into the hyperspace. This is how an initiate escapes from the grave in the supersensible world. In hyperspace, holy women treat the body of the initiate with perfumes and aromatic ointments. Then, by obeying superior orders, the physical body penetrates within the astral body through the top of the head. This is how the master once again possesses his physical body. This is a gift of Cupid. After the resurrection, the master does not die again. He is eternal. With this immortal body, he can appear and disappear instantaneously. Master can make themselves visible in the physical world at will. Tarot in Kabbalah by Samael on the Or. The human souls who take the direct paths have to enter into the mysteries of the second mountain or mountain of resurrection, which concludes with the qualification of the eight Venustic initiations of the Sephiroth, Malkut, Yesod, Hod, Netzach, Tifereth, Geburah, Chesed, and Bina, respectively, in order to resurrect in Haya, the soul of Bina, the Holy Spirit, and thus become and a fresh higher, a living soul in Eden. Resurrection happens after the initiate qualifies the eighth Venustic initiation that relates to Bina, 
This is described in the life of Saint Job. It is written, Job calls for a champion, a liberator, because he knows that it, higher, the soul of Ina or Shiva, is eternal and will redeem him from the slavery of Malkut, the earth, by means of the intimate resurrection, by restoring his flesh with the body of liberation. Job, while under divine permission, is tormented, deprived, sick under the cruel action of those malignant beings that Aristophanes called the black birds. Saint Paul called them the black powers of the air. The church called them demons. Theosophy and Kabbalah calls them elementaries, etc. Nonetheless, Job is just, and he utters the theme of his own justification before such rigors of destiny, of destiny, and finally conquers with the sacred it of the crucifixion of his ulcerated flesh. Jehovah, the interior Yod Hava of each person, permits the healer angels or genes whose classic leader, as found in the book, such as the book of Tob uh, Tobias, is the Archangel Raphael, to approach him. This is from the three mountains of the Master Samael on the earth. The Egyptians mummified their cadavers. This, mum this mummification was performed by introducing the deceased person's ethereal body within his physical body. This is how the ethereal body suspended the decomposition of the cadaver. Cadaver. The illustrious master Paracelsus classifies the bodies as follows. The limbus, the mumia, the archaeus, the sidereal body, or sidereal, sidereal body, adek, the internal man or superior manas, made of the flesh of Adam, alwek, and the body of the inner most. This is uh, written by the Master Zamael in Esoteric Medicine. The vehicle of the Archaeus, or astral vital life force, Paracelsus called the Mumia, from the Egyptian medical system regarding the mummification. The control of universal energy, astral force, is virtually impossible save through one of its vehicles, the mumia. A good example of this is food. Man does not secure nourishment from dead animals or plant organisms, but when he incorporates their structures into his own body, he first gains control over the mumia, or etheric double of the animal or plant. Having obtained this control, the human organism then diverts the flow of the archaeus or astral force to its own uses. Paracelsus stated, that which constitutes the life, the it, the higher, the soul of Bina, it contained in the mumia, is contained in the mumia. And by imparting the mumia, we impart life. This is the secret of the rem remedial properties of th talismans and amulets. For the mumia of the substances 
of which they are composed serve as a channel to connect the person wearing them with certain manifestations of the universal vital life force. According to Paracelsus, in the same way that plants purify their atm atmosphere by accepting into their constitutions the carbon dioxide excelled by animals and humans, so may plants and animals accept disease elements transferred to them by human beings. These lower forms of life having organisms and needs different from men, are often able to assimilate these substances without ill effect. At other times, the plant or animal dies, sacrifice, in order that the more intelligent and consequently more useful creature may survive. Paracelsus discovered that in either case, the patient was gradually re relieved of his malady. When the lover life had either completely assimilated the foreign mumia from the patient, or had itself died and disintegrated as a result of his inability to do so, complete recovery resulted. Many years of investigation were necessary to de determine or de to determine which hair or animal most readily accepted the mumia of each of various diseases. Paracelsus discovered that in many cases plants reveal by their shape the particular organ of the human body which they serve most effectively, the medical system of Paracelsus was based on the theory that by removing the disease aesthetic mumia from the organism of the patient and causing it to be accepted into the nature of some distant and disinterested thing of comparatively little value, it was possible to divert from the patient the flaw of the archaeus, which had been continually revitalizing and nourishing the malady, his vehicle of expression being transplanted the archaeus necessarily, accompanying its mumia, and the patient recovered. This is from the Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. It is worth to mention that the astral light of prana from the fifth dimension is transformed into a very divine, intensely blue substance. The name of this substance is Akasha. The Akasha is a marvelous substance that fills the entire infinite space. And when it is modified in the fourth dimension, it becomes ether. It is very interesting to know that the ether can be broken down into four different ethers. Chemical, life, light, and reflective. Therefore, by absorbing the finest atoms of the physical body, the chemical ether and the ether of life, and the mumia, that is, the it, the higher, that forms the life soul of Vina, the initiate, resurrects physically in Yesod, the fourth dimension, and as an immortal twice born, with his tetradimensional body of liberation, he enters into the mysteries of the third mountain, or mountain of ascension and goes beyond good and evil. Regarding the third mountain, or mountain of ascension, it is stated in Pistisophia. 
It came to pass then, when the mumia, the two superior ethers, that light power, Logoi like of Vina, had come down over Jesus. But it, the Logoi light, gradually through the Logoi triangle and the three aspects of the uncreated light of the absolute surrounded him entirely. Then, this is how Jesus ascended or soared into the height, the summit of the mountain of ascension, shining most exceedingly in an immeasurable light. And the disciples gazed after him, and none of them spake until he had reached unto heaven. But they all kept in deep silence. This then came to pass on the fifteenth day of the moon in Jesod Sax. On the day on which it is full of solar energy. In the month Tibi, the mystery of Tifon Baphomet, the Peace of Sophia unveiled, chapter 3, by Samael on the Or. The twice born, the one who is born within the superior worlds as a master of the Mahamambantara, the one who leaves the ninth sphere for the fact of having completed his work with Bina, the Holy Spirit, the eighth sephira from Malkut, never ever can return to the ninth sphere again, because this will be a crime, similar to the child who, after being born, wanted to enter again within the womb of his mother. Any twice born is a child of the mother Kundalini, and if he wants to progress, he must love his divine mother. He must never forget his mother, Bina. To the twice born, the sexual act remains forbidden for all eternity. Thus he must attain absolute chastity in all the territories of the mind. Light from Darkness by Samael on Veor. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, 17, we read, And Yod Chava Elohim Bina commanded Adam, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. The allegory of the biblical Adam, which is considered separated from the tree of life, clearly signifies that such a Lemurian race, who were already separated into opposite sexes, abused sexually and sank into the region of animality and bestiality. From the Three Mountains by Samael on Veor. And through the bestial orgasm, he, Adam, or Lemurian race, drove it out of their spinal medulla and caused it to dwell in the Muladhara Chakra, in the coccygeal bone, the east of the Garden of Eden, the Kerubim, and it as a passional sword, which, during the sexual act, turned every way in the blood to keep fornicators out of the way of the spinal medulla, or tree of life. This is from Genesis 3, chapter 24, or 3, chapter 24, 
birth. And this is why Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18, 19, and 21 wrote, I said in my heart concerning the present state of the children of Adam that Elohim might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which happens to the children of Adam happens to the beasts. Even one thing happens to them. As one dies, so the others die. Yet, they have all one spirit. And Adam has no advantage over the beasts. For all are vanity. Who? The Holy Spirit. Knows if the spirit of the children of Adam ascends upward in their spine. And knows that the spirit of the beast descend downward to hell. The human being of this day and age still does not have these internal vehicles. The astral specter, the mental specter, and the causal specter are only specters. The majority of occultists believe that these inner specters are the true vehicles. Nonetheless, they are very mistaken. We need to be born in the superior worlds. This subject matter about being born is a sexual problem. The Christ astral is born as the body of flesh and bone is born. This is sexual. Only with sexual magic between husband and wife can one give birth to that marvelous body. We can say the same of the mental and causal bodies. We need to engender those internal bodies. And that is only possible with sexual contact because as above, so below. And as below, so above. No celibate person can marry his feminine physical impulse with the masculine of his inner soul, because a single celibate person cannot incarnate his soul. To incarnate the soul, we must engender the internal bodies, and only through the sexual union of men and women can they, can they be engendered. No single man or woman can engender or conceive. The two poles are necessary to create. This is what life is. For the Lord thy God is a devouring sexual fire, a jealous God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. For God, a devouring sexual fire, so loved the world that by means of sexual alchemy he gave Baesh his only begotten son, that whosoever builds faith on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God, a devouring sexual fire, sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that builds faith on him Ingri, the fire, is not condemned. But he that does not build faith on Ingri, the fire, is condemned already. Because he has not built faith in the name of Baresh, the only begotten son of God, a devouring sexual fire. And this is the condemnation that the solar light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than the light of the world, because their sexual deeds were evil. 
For everyone that fornicates does evil, hates the light of the world, neither comes to the light, lest his sexual deeds should be reproved by devouring sexual fire, a uh, jealous God. But he does, that does the truth, sexual alchemy, comes to the light, that his sexual deeds may be made manifest, that they are brought in God. The Pentecostal fire, it, the hydrogen T12. <laughs> To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. <laughs>